Hello everybody. What's up? We are continuing on with the Dark Souls 2s. And last episode we did pretty much all of Forest of the Fallen Giants. This episode I don't think oh we can reinforce. We're gonna reinforce our mace. And if we have more souls we can reinforce it again. And I think we got a bunch of... No, we only got two. Okay, well, we might not be able to reinforce it again. Uh, I really highly doubt we're going to be able to. Yeah, no. Oh, come here, how much was it? Yeah, no. Okay, maybe we can level up on stuff. So we can do that. And what we're going to be... Oh, I have a shard to give her. Apparently. Where's that shard from? I don't think I don't got any more. Okay, level up. And... Yeah, we can. So, I'm not going to go into strength. I'm going to go into adaptability. Because I have a few characters on this game. And the one that has adaptability, like a lot of it, like over 20, is very easy to roll dodge people. And that's really important in boss fights, in my opinion. So, now we have no souls and nothing to do, so we're going to go back to the Cardinal Tower. Uh, I don't know if I should turn notifications off for recording, because I don't usually get very many notifications. So Yeah, so this episode, it might be a little shorter, depending on how it goes. We're basically going to be fighting... We're either going to fight two bosses, or we're going to do one boss and start another area. But, I don't know. Probably, actually, we could do one boss, start a new area, another boss, and then see where we are at that point. I didn't start a timer again. I can start one right now. Uh, clock. Start. There we go. So it'll be a couple minutes off, but oh well. So we're here, and yeah, I don't think we need to do anything really, just go to the boss. Now, secretly in the back of my brain, I'm hoping, against all odds, that I can do this without dying. Like, the game, the whole game. Because you get, I heard that you get a ring, I heard it was the ring that makes your weapons invisible. Which is pretty good for PvP. I don't really PvP much, but I kind of want to start. By the way, watch out for this guy on the left here. He's a bitch. Uh, so yeah, there's summons here. If we talk to Pate, which was the guy up by that gate over there, he would be here to summon also. And you have to summon him to continue his story, I think, but I don't really care. So we're going to fight the boss. It's the last giant. And, uh, well, I'll show this cutscene. No. Maybe. Yeah, no, I don't like his butthole face. We're not going to watch the cutscene. So this guy's pretty easy. I'll actually show you a real easy way to cheese him. This leg, if you stand beside it, he will do this attack. And then you can hit him, and he will keep doing this attack. Every now and then he'll jump backwards. But, most of the time, he just does this over and over again, until he rips his arm off. Oh, that's weird. He actually didn't do it. Do the swipe attack. Do it! There you go. Yeah, so this is a pretty easy way to cheese this fight. Sometimes if you back up too soon, I think, he might stop doing it. But, uh, so yeah, so just like, depending on the speed of your weapon, just wait there a few seconds until he actually starts the attack. And, uh, once he rips his arm off, I figured out a pretty good pattern for him also. So basically you just stand in front of him, he'll do some sort of attack, hit him, he'll, okay he'll jump backwards, that's okay too. Usually he stomps, so wait for him to stomp, okay, well I'm not doing this very well, but at least he hasn't hit me. Wait for him to stomp, there we go, then roll towards his other leg because his stomps can get pretty, uh, they can get some range on them. So usually he'll only stomp after that. 
And there, he's dead. That wasn't a very good showing how to cheese him on the last one, because he was kind of just shoved himself to the corner, but... Usually he'll do like a swipe attack with his arm, and then you run between his legs, hit him, and then usually he'll stomp and then roll towards his other leg, and then go back in front of him, and then he'll do a swipe attack again and just rinse and repeat pretty much, but... That... The first time I played this game, I died probably about like fucking 30 times on that boss, so I'm not going to say it's easy, but... It's easy once you know how to do it. Let's just say that. So we got the soldier's key, which you'd think would open this door, but it doesn't. That's a different key that's in a different area completely, so... As far as I know, at least. So there's... <laughs> there's the last giant boss fight. Pretty easy, once you know how to do it. Um, yeah, it's... Basically, I almost don't recommend using a shield in any boss fight. I mean, there's a few, obviously, where a shield is really helpful, but... It's so much better just to know how to dodge them. So... I'm not going to do anything else in this area right now, because we have souls. So I'm going to go use them. And then we're going to go to a new area. Because I feel, I feel like the other boss in this area is m not meant to be done right now. Even though it's usually when I do it. So we're going to go to Majula. Ugh. But yeah, I'm hoping to do this playthrough without dying and get that fucking achievement and ring. Supposedly a ring. Um, but <laughs> there's a couple bosses where I pretty much am guaranteed to die, so. Well, one of. Basically, bosses that have more than one person, I usually always die on at least once. So now that we have souls, we're gonna upgrade our mace. Uh, reinforce, mace. Yes. So now we need two large titanite shards to reinforce it. And with the rest, we're going to not travel. Fuck, I always go to the bonfire to level up. Stupid Dark Souls change and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... I'm going to keep leveling up adaptability. Just to 15, I think. And then there, and one there. Um, maybe 14. That looks better. We'll go with that. Uh, so yeah. That's that. I'm gonna try and stick with the silver kite eagle, whatever the fuck the shield's called. Until we get the better shield, which is actually, you get after you fight the other boss in Forest of the Fallen Giants. But I don't want to do that yet, because... I don't know. I kind of want to level up adaptability a bit because if I don't dodge very well, there's a really good chance I could die. And as I said, I don't really want to die in this playthrough, but I might. At some point, we're going to have to take risks, so. Uh, down here on your left, sometimes you can miss it easily if you're running really fast, but it doesn't really matter if you miss it, to be honest. I don't know why it's in an iron chest, to be honest again. Get a Crimson Parma. I can show you it if you want. It's shitty. It's really shitty. Even the description says it's fitty, uh, shitty. A fancy name and nifty paint are surely what a merchant's efforts to make this very ordinary shield more attractive, so... It's not a good shield. Don't use it. And pull that, and that'll open this. I don't know whether this only opens for so long, or whether, like, running certain distance closes it, but it does close behind you. But there is a uh, another lever right up there to open it again if you want to go back. I think it's just on a timer, really. It doesn't really make sense to, uh, like, have a certain distance trigger it, because it'll go down. I know it'll go down. Please go down. There, see, it's going down, so. Not really that important, to be honest. So, here we are. My favorite area in the entire game. Hades Tower of Flame. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I wonder what that is. That'd be sick if you could get over there somehow. But, yeah, it's pr just so pretty. The drawbridge. The castle. 
And I just, I love, like, brighter areas. They just make me feel so happy. So this guy I'm actually not going to fight right now, because there's a bonfire right here. So just in case I die, I don't want to have to run that whole way again. Rest. These guys are hella easy. Like, well, one at a time they're easy. If there's more than one, they're pretty difficult, because they do take a while to kill. Basically, you just go behind him, keep circling, otherwise he'll hit you with, like, the backswing of that. And then fire away. And this mace actually does a lot of damage, you know. That's, that's not bad. This guy's a little a little more difficult. I'm actually going to pull my shield out just in case I get smacked. Which I am. Oh, fuck. I just don't know this guy's moveset very well. I like that attack, though. Because I know that one. So, yeah, that guy's a little more difficult just because maces have a really large swing area. And I don't know that guy's moveset too well, so. Um... And there's this guy up here. You can actually just run past him. He doesn't really give a fuck unless you bother him. Like, you can just go this way and he won't fight you. But you can see a little square on the ground, so we're going to kill him and see what that is. Half, this t half the time this guy falls off, but we're killing him pretty fast anyway. And these guys, yeah, these guys drop cracked blue eye orbs a lot. And they also drop pale stones every now and then. So this... Elevated a lever, and if we look at the boss, well, spoilers, boss arena, you can see that come up. So I'm making the playground a little, little bigger. So that's probably helpful. You don't need to pull these levers. You can fight the boss on the tiny ass platform. That's really the only way I could see anyone dying to this boss is just falling off because they didn't pull the levers, but. This guy should be, yeah, two hit. Easy. And then once you kill him, both of these guys will come at you. So, I like to run over here. Because then that'll leash the one on the other side. He'll go back to his door. And then you can fight these guys one at a time. Which is much more preferable. In my opinion. I mean, you can try and kill them both at once if you want to. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. There's that. So, actually, yeah, we'll kill that guy because... In order for this lever, you see there's another square right here, They're in order for this lever to come up, all the guys in this area have to die, so we're going to kill this guy too. And, you know, same strategy, just circle around, keep circling, otherwise he, he like he's hit me multiple times with the backswing of that second attack. So either, if you don't want to keep circling, you can just back up till you're out of range of it, or you can roll through it, it's pretty easy. But, I just keep circling him and generally it won't hit you, so... And, uh, yeah. So, and these big, the greatsword guys, they have less health. So, basically, I like to kill them after the first attack. They generally do, like, a big swing like that. And some of their attacks are annoying. But, oh well. So we're going to carefully go through here. And by the way, if you're planning on running through this, and thinking that this is a refuge, those big guys can run across that gap, too, so... You're pretty much fucked if you come here with guys on you. Just by the way. You know, we didn't pull the lever, did we? God damn it. I'm retarded. The whole reason I killed that guy was to pull the lever. And then I didn't pull the lever. I mean, you don't really need to pull this lever. It's pretty easy. You could, it's pretty easy to kill this boss just on the without pulling any levers. But once you pull one, that's generally enough for him. But I'm just going to pull it just so you can see. You can kind of see there. You'll see the water fizzing up a bit. And then another section comes up. I think at this point it's impossible to actually fall off, so... Pretty much, if you die on this boss, either... I don't know. I You could die on this boss, I mean... If you don't know Dark Souls very well, or... He just catches you off guard or something, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything bad about people that die on this boss, because, you know... I'm sure lots of people die on this boss, but... He's pretty easy to dodge. And dodge. And you basically just circle around him like that, and whenever he goes to attack, you just roll. And he'll shield up a while, and that's kind of annoying, because then you have to wait. And sometimes he does a two attack there, but he didn't this time. Sometimes he'll do a two, a two attack after that, uh, that stab, too. It's not very common. This one's more common. Usually if I feel like I'm late on an attack, like he's already starting to recover, I'll just do the one. 
There, there's a two, that'll hit me, yeah. Yeah, so that's not very common, but... Oh, shit! I better not die, otherwise I'm a jerk. Oh, shit! I'm so happy that didn't hit me. If I would've died on this fight... Uh, I'm doing so bad. The nerves, the nerves of making a video are getting to me. And I don't have a lot of endurance, so... Attack, you fuck. And there's the two attack. That usually isn't very common. And he does get staggered pretty easy, which is surprising, because he has... Looks like he has a fuckload of armor, but... That went really poorly. So, usually I don't even get hit on that fight. But... <laughs> oh, well, at least we didn't die. Got a little scary, eh? Though, but, oh well. Oh well. There's a bonfire up here. So... Good location. Um, um, I don't think I'll rest at it right now. Talk. This lady basically sells miracles. She sells a chime. I think it's just the, like, regular chime. We got one for free right at the beginning of the game, too. Yeah, she sells a string that's just expensive as fuck and increases faith. And then a fuckload of miracles that... The only one I really like is Lightning Spear, because it does insane damage. But yeah. Yeah. That's her. And actually, wait a second. You want to exhaust her dialogue. Because then she'll go back to Majula, and she's actually... Uh, I guess that's it. She's actually very crucial in progress in this game. So, do I want to... We'll just do this whole area first, because, I mean, there's nothing difficult about this area, especially since we have a shield, so. Um, do we have a bow? We have two bows that we can't use. Well, we can, but... Do we have arrows, though, is the question. We have ten fire arrows. I'll put them on just in case. Because there is an enemy up here that I do like to pull up a bow because you can just aggro like just from running at them one at a time but I don't know every now and then I accidentally aggro to both of them so and that is these guys so I'm just gonna pop this guy and the other one will get aggroed so like I said you can run up to them and just aggro one but I've fucked it up a couple times so this guy should come all the way in here, I believe. Yay. Yay. Uh, two and three. So yeah, that's the attack I basically don't like. But it's pretty easy to dodge either. anyways. So that's a Pale Stone. I believe that if you inf you can infuse any weapon pretty much in this game with like fire or poison or some shit like that. And the Pale Stone will let you... Oh shit, I missed will let you uninfuse it, I think. Yeah, that's definitely what it does. So that's pretty helpful to have if you choose an infusion and you realize it does nothing, like poison. <laughs> no, poison's... I, I think poison's pretty good for PvP, but I've noticed that it doesn't... it doesn't build up very well. At least when I've had it. Maybe I'm wrong. You never know. That right, guy's dead. And once you kill that guy, there's another lever will pop up. And guess what that does? I wonder if you can guess. Guess what it does. This this part's sick, by the way. I love watching this. Like, it's so cool. I mean, look at that. Jesus Christ. Boom. And then the chains start shaking and shit. That's just sick. This is by far my favorite area in the game. One, because it's easy. <laughs> and two, it's, be it's just beautiful. So, old Radiant Life Gem, that's basically a Life Gem, but better. Twice better. There's Life Gem, Radiant Life Gem, and Old Radiant Life Gem. So, And then, Ring of Binding and another Human Effigy. Ring of Binding is very helpful. Not for us, because we don't plan on dying. But limits HP reduction when hollow. So every time you die in this game, you'll get a little bit more hollow. And, uh... You know, the more you die, the more hollow you get, and your 
maximum HP gets limited depending on how hollow you are. And it'll go all the way to 50% health. I believe the Ring of Binding puts it, makes it only so it goes, caps at like 75%. So I don't know if it's tax exactly 75, but that's what it looks like when I'm using it. So, so we're going to enter this mist, and this is a boss fight, which is pretty epic location for a boss fight, like a castle in the middle of the ocean and shit, but I hope everyone enjoys the sentiment that is this boss fight, because I love it, and yes, it is Ornstein. Well, oh shit. He's actually kind of hard to kill. Uh, I might die here. Fuck. Right when I said I didn't want to die. Okay, so we're going to back up. Hopefully he does his jump. Jump. Yeah. There. And then us. us and die. Fuck. Okay, well, so much for not dying in this playthrough. That's a, that's the first time I died to Ornstein. God damn it. And I know his name's Old Dragon Slayer. And it might not be Ornstein, but... You know. Me and Ornstein have some special feelings toward each other. <sighs> That's annoying. Okay, well, I'm not going to kill him now, then. Fuck. Now I'm a little pissed off. Oh, okay, so we're just going to go through here and go to the next area. <sighs> well, oh well, I'll do a no-death run at some point in this game. Just not right now. If you keep running around in circles around here, you'll get the Monastery Charm, which has something to do with spells and restoring HP or something. I don't know. You can use it if you want to, but I don't. There's these motherfuckers in here, so. And he still hits me. That's why I hate that attack, because if you circle to the right, I don't know how to dodge it. So. Well. I don't know why I was circling to the right anyway. I usually always circle to the left. Except on certain enemies where it's undesirable to. And that guy does his three attack. Sometimes they have a little stab at the end of that three attack, but I've been like right directly in front of him and it still doesn't hit me, so. Sometimes it does. But it's not that bad. And they don't really do it very often. So Old Knight Halberd. I think it's pretty decent. Um, this is a E and B, so it's basically a dex, dex halberd. I think most halberds are dex, actually. I don't know. 170 damage, that's alright. Pretty heavy. Very low durability. So, I don't know, he might want... There's a, a ring in the pit, I believe. Bracing knuckle ring, or maybe this, maybe I'm thinking of a different ring, but... There is a ring in this game that makes your weapons and armor and shit degrade slower, so if you're using old knight stuff, it generally doesn't have a lot of good shit. I don't think there's anything over here, but I always look, because it seems like there should be something. At least an illusory wall or something, but there isn't. And uh, in this game, the only illusory walls I've seen are ones that you press A on. You don't actually attack them like in the other Dark Souls. So... Except for like the Ferris Lockstone ones, but for those ones you have to use a Ferris Lockstone and then they show you where it is and then you attack it. But for just regular illusory walls, I haven't found any that you would just attack. And trust me, I have tried attacking, so. I don't know if there are. There might be, might not be. I probably missed a million illusory walls in this game, so. Uh, I'm still salty that I died, dude. That's annoying. So we're going to take an elevator down here, this is going to be more uh, more old knights, I believe that's what they're called, considering that's what the armor they drop is called, so why would they be wearing old knight armor if they're not old knights, right? So we're going to go here, it's going to be a guy to our left, you don't have to kill this guy, you can just run by, and then the next area is down there, I think so, there's a hole in the wall, right, I can't see, yeah, this totes a hole in the wall, but I'm going to kill this guy because it's there's another area we can go to. Oh shit, he attacked early. So there, see, you can roll dodge that, and it's not that bad. Oh, and there's this stab attack, and it actually hit me. No! Oh! I died. God, how do I... It has to be because I'm recording. I've... These guys are... God... 
I don't know what to say. I start crying. Fuck. This game is gonna make me insane. I don't know what's going on. Probably just rushing. Like I should after he hit me with that stab attack, I shouldn't have tried to attack again, but And then we traded and then fuck. So at the beginning here, I'm probably just gonna run by most of these guys. Or I might just cut it back to where that is, depending. But yeah, so. You die a lot in this game, even to stupid shit that shouldn't actually kill you. So this guy, I believe I should just be able to run past. Oh shit, he almost hit me. So yeah, those guys can't get in these doors, so you don't have to worry about, uh... Yeah, attack. And you attack and run. Oh shit! I forgot the elevator wouldn't be. Does that guy come in here? I don't know. Oh fuck, he does. Well, we could just cut this guy around until the elevator comes up. So, come on, buddy. Keep walking. I wonder if the other guy will come in too. That'll be shitty because he'll probably get in here like as soon as I get around. This doesn't look like he's going to, though. Oh, come over here. There you go. No! This way. Yeah, there you go. And close the gates! Close up! Jesus Christ. Bye-bye. Imagine if this guy just, like, leaped down and plunging attacked me. That'd be insane. Uh, but now I'm hollow, and as you can see, I'm pretty ugly. So, we're gonna have to change that. But I'll wait till I get to the next bonfire so I don't waste a human effigy. Okay, so let's not die to this guy again. I mean, I could just run by him, but... I mean, they're so easy to kill. Oh, okay. So this time you don't do the stab attack, asshole. Whatever. I think there is another guy up here? No. Huh. Just empty. So over here, the whole reason we died, again, is to get this iron chest so you can attack as much as you want if you want to. Night shit. I'm actually going to wear it because why not, right? Uh, night. Uh, night. Uh, night. Awesome. So we're not... In this game, it shows your equip burden percent in the bottom right, which is really helpful. I enjoy it. And if you're above 70%, which I will show you... Should go this. Oh, that's 100%. We don't want to be that high. Uh, okay, so there. 76%. If you're above 70%, you fat roll. And, you know, no one likes the fat roll. So, 68%. Normal roll. But it scales like smoothly as you go up in percents before 70. So like 0% will be way faster than 68%. But it's like it scales so slowly that you don't really notice it. So it's not really a big deal. But um Yeah, and then once you you can be at exactly 70% and you'll still normal roll. But anything above like 70.1, you'll fat roll. And if you go above 100, show you you super fat roll and if you go above 120 I believe what do we got here though anything as heavy as fuck I don't really have anything super heavy do we um do we have any super heavy armor no all right well I don't really got enough shit to show you right now, but when we do, if you go above 120, I believe you walk super slow. I think it's 120, I don't know. I like this bonfire. And sit at it. You know what I just realized? I lost a bunch of souls because I died to Ornstein. Shit. Oh well, souls aren't that big of a deal. This is Lucatiel. She's a badass. 
Looks like a man, but that's because she's wearing a mask. She talks to you about a bunch of shit and how she's super badass and stuff. And how she'll help you and that she won't be missed if she dies and stuff like that. Pretty much just cool badass stuff. Uh, I think we've exhausted her dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is No Man's Wharf. Now what do we want to do here? Let's think. Let's think about this hard. Well, I'll show you the area first. It's basically like Pirate Cove. To the general look of it. There's a big old big old pirate ship. You know, big old pirate town. Broken pirate ship. Guy laying on the floor ready to ambush you. People shooting flame arrows at you. All in all, not the nicest place to be, so we're gonna avoid it for now. You actually don't have to do this area at all if you don't want to. You can beat the game completely with skipping it. And Luca Teal's gone, because we talked to her too much. She's like, damn, you talk too much. Then told us to fuck off. Just kidding. So, we're gonna go back to Majula real quick. And, um, we might fight the Pursuer. That's the other boss in... Of course, the Fallen Giants that I didn't want to fight yet, but I don't think I want to do a whole other area right now. So first we will, we don't have large Titanites, so we'll go talk to her, see if we can level up. Damn it. So we'll just do adaptability one more time. Because I don't know how much, like, mathematically it actually does for you, but I feel like it helps me. Alright, so we're gonna go, we're, we're gonna fight the Pursuer. He's kind of a badass. Probably one of my favorite bosses in the game. Mainly just because he doesn't actually walk, he just floats everywhere, which is real cool. But anyway, you'll see. There's a way you can fight him, like, before you actually fight him, which sounds weird, but... There's an area that you can go to, and he'll show up once and only once. So, you can try and beat him the first time, but if you don't, he won't show up again. So yeah, it's right where that guy's throwing firebombs. There's a ladder to get up to that platform up there. And when you if you go up there, you'll activate an event where he f gets dropped down from an eagle, which is super badass already. And then you can fight him there, but... If you die or if you run away, he'll despawn, and he you'll never be able to fight him again there. And I, as far as I could tell, you don't actually get anything special for uh, killing him there. Because me and my friend did it when we were playing some co-op, and all he got was the Soul of the Pursuer and Ring of Blades, which is what you get normally. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a pretty easy fight if you can dodge well. I don't suggest trying to tank his shots because some of them fuck your stamina. These guys are really annoying. I hate the shield guys. They just fucking shield up and do whatever they want. And then they just run away from you. There he comes. What are you doing, buddy? You can't just run at me and then back off like that. There we go. Attack! Ah, oh, damn it. See if we can just circle around him. There we go. I hate those guys so much. So yeah, once you kill the last giant, you'll get the soldier key, which can open this door. It opens a few other doors too, so. And then you can come up here, there's this guy. Notice me. There we go. Oh, and then he'll back the fuck up. I don't like to run in there, because there's another guy that comes at you, but... This guy's going to be an asshole, and I have to. What are you doing, buddy? Like, for real. I like that attack, because it takes them a while to recover from it, so you can easily get hits in, but... These guys... Come on. That last attack takes so long. Like, when I first played, fought those guys, like I thought it was just like a two attack, because like the last attack takes forever, and I'd always get hit by it. So, so yeah, up here there's a fog wall. That's where the boss is. Up here is something. I can't remember what it is. Souls and a life gem, that's always helpful. So yeah, we're gonna fight the Pursuer. 
And I am actually going to let his cutscene play because he is such a badass. So I might die on this fight. It's pretty dude. It's it's a decently hard fight. Like it's not like one of those fights where it's like, oh yeah, I can do this without dying, no problem. I might die. So I mean, I died on Ornstein, so I guess anything is possible at this point. Ornstein is generally really easy, but I don't think I've ever fought him without like a decent shield and like actual good endurance. So that's probably what it is. Well, actually, I've, I've fought him and beat him dual wielding, but I had really good adaptability. So this guy, you want him to charge you like this. You want him to do that attack because that is what is going to be your bread and butter. And those, you should generally dive roll and not attack after because you have no stamina. But essentially, that's the attack. So yeah. I suggest- oh, and definitely avoid that attack, because that attack fucks this fight. Like, if you get hit by that, the fight is essentially over. So yeah, I suggest only attacking him once, because his attacks do take down a lot of stamina. And he recovers pretty fast from his attacks, too. Come on, attack third. Yeah. You can just go forward and to the right off that other one, and you won't- Generally won't get hit by it. So yeah, that does insane stamina damage. That spinning one. Oh, uh, I pressed B, but it didn't work. God damn it. I hate my controller. Sometimes it just chooses not to work. So I should probably try and S this at some point. Please do. Yeah, that's the one we want. Estus. And it's really hard to Estus in this fight just because he recovers so fast from his attacks. And like, stamina management is the most important. I've never seen that before. And he can get staggered. So, that's weird. I've never seen him do this, a stab attack without cursing him, his blade. Like, that's the only stab attack I've ever seen him do. So yeah, I generally don't attack after that because you have to roll three times to avoid it, pretty much, so. That one I blocked the first one so I could attack, but I don't know. Stamina management is just so important in this fight. Just play it safe. And dead. Alright, so that wasn't that bad. So yeah, that one basically just like know what attacks to avoid. Like, that 3 attack will definitely get you killed if you try and block the whole thing. Especially at when you, if you don't have that much endurance. Because that last, like, spinning one, and I'm pretty sure the, la the times when he does the, like, downward strike thing, that probably does a lot of stamina damage too, but... Yeah, so basically just learn how to roll past those attacks is my advice. Because it's really hard to manage your stamina well. So that, basically the only reason we do that fight is to get this. Drain like sword, drain like shield, and drain like armor. I don't really care about the armor, because I don't really care about armor in this game at all. But drain like shield, 100% block shield. You get it for free. Okay stability. Well, that means good stability for a regular shield, so that's good. As soon as we get 16 strength, which we'll get as soon as we go back and level up, as long as we don't lose these souls, um, we'll be able to use it, which is going to be really helpful. We can probably uh, even go and fight Ornstein after this. This guy should come alive. Come on. No! Oh, there we go. Kill that guy, and again, badass sword sticking into the side of the thing. That's a halberd up there, and probably just a soul or something. But yeah, so there's the pursuer. And actually, let's not go back this way. We'll go back up there, because I want to show you something else about that boss fight. This is the other way to get to, like, you know how I said after, or when I was in No Man's Wharf, you don't actually have to do that area? Because, um, the la the area after that is called the Last Bastille, or Bastille, I don't know how to pronounce it. The Lost Bastump thing. Um, you can get there through here. Which is like, what? How? This doesn't go anywhere. Well, for one, that's a giant over here. Oh, no, there's nothing behind him, I don't think. So up here... There's this little bird's nest, and it's like, oh, snuggly, no, examine. And you'll see what happens. The pursuer's badass evil grabs you. 
which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Oh. And then we get taken somewhere. And I, I, you can probably guess that we get taken to the last Bastille, or Bastille, or Bastille something. So yeah, that's the way you go through the game without doing No Man's Wharf. I'm just going to skip that. Because this is the area after it, so I mean, why would you need to do it if you can just do this? But you do have to fight the Pursuer, and he's a pretty difficult boss early in the game. Unless you're good at dodging. And there's a bonfire right here, so you don't have to really worry about nothing. I'm going to rest out just to get Estus back. And I'm actually going to go over here. I want to grab a couple things. You go along here, there's a guy right there, you can go and kill him if you want to, you don't have to. Here you get a large titanite shard, which is helpful. Here you get a really decently good ring, I guess, if you like farming. <laughs> Covered a silver serpent ring and antiquated key. I don't actually know what the antiquated key is for, I'm sure it's for something important, but yeah. Fallen foes yield more souls. Oh, and actually, ring of blades that you get from the pursuer increases physical attack, so it's just straight up good in my opinion. And we're going to wear that probably throughout the whole game. Open this up. There's a few dogs in here, so I'm going to shield up. Come on. Come on. And we're not going to go through this whole area today. I just want to uh, get a few things. Oh, fucker. And rolls is probably one behind me. And I'm fat rolling. What the F? Probably from the rings, I guess. Because rings do actually have weight in this game, so. Come on. Come at me, bro. Yeah, that's right, bitch. I hate dogs. I hated them in Dark Souls 1, and I hate them in this game, so let's just look. Not inventory. So yeah, we're actually at 72. That's gotta be because of the rings. We can take the bow off. No, that doesn't really make a difference, so we'll put it back on. So I guess we'll take the legs off. Shit! There we go. That's better. Um, so yeah, there's this area. You climb up here, and that guy that was in the window is up here, so you can go and Fuck him up. Alright, I didn't know that would happen. I didn't even know there was a barrel there. But, you know, didn't kill us, so who cares. You don't need to kill that guy, you can just leave him up there and try and climb up the slider without getting shot in the back, but... Yeah, more souls. Especially with the silver co covetous silver sugar ring. And you just go up here, and this is right where you were. That's right where the bonfire is, that's right where you came and went around the building. Except now you're on this side, and this guy tries to kill you. These guys are super easy to kill, because they're slow as fuck. And they just do this attack over and over again, and it takes like no, no stamina down, so... If you do get hit, they do a decent amount of damage, though, I think. And then we're gonna go over here. You can't... Normally, you'll come from that side, if you go through No Man's Wharf. And you can't actually open this door from the other side, so... In order to get to this area, you do have to kill the Pursuer. But in here is Lucatio. You can talk to her again and find out she's even more badass than badass itself. And she'll give you a human effigy. But the main reason I came here is... I don't think we'll aggro that fella. No. You go... Fuck. I always hate traversing things where you can fall off in this game. Because I always tend to fall off. This way. Okay, and then we get to the ladder. I'll sprint up the ladder, and up here is large titanite shard. Yes. So now we have two large titanite shards, because we got one earlier from the, uh, you know. I don't know if we can get back, actually. Can we get no, we can't. We totally can't. Shit. Um. But you know what we can do while we're here? is I'll show you a hidden bonfire slash blacksmith. It's not that far. And we should be able to do it right now. Normally you can't do it the first time through if you come from the other side, so... These guys, if they're being bitches, I like to just block through their... Why am I inside him? I like to just block through their attacks, because... Ah, I hit! There we go. I hate running out of stamina. Because their attacks don't take that much stamina off, and... And you know how it is. I love being able to come behind the dogs, because they're just so clueless. 
they don't even notice. But this guy will be facing you, so. Yeah, attack something. They're super easy to dodge. Oh, fuck. God damn it, dude. Hit detection, man. The dogs are really only annoying when they're accompanied by something greater. So you. Come this way. Don't hit the barrel. Come this way. Come on. I don't want you anywhere near that barrel. Alright, do another attack. Blah, blah. Stagger. Dead. Those guys are super easy to kill. So this. This is what we need. It might not work out, but hopefully it will. Whoosh! Push the barrel! Hit the wall. Yeah. Oh, it killed the dog too. So normally if you come from the other side, you'll come through here, and then that guy will push the barrel, and every time he pushes the barrel, it like jumps and skips and hits this wall. So... But then after after you come through a second time, he generally doesn't aggro until you go like right up to him. So you can like draw him away from it like that. But I like coming from this side, it's just easier. You can get it first try. There's a bonfire. Which is a good bonfire to be at. And there's this man, McDuff. And he basically tells you that he doesn't have an ember. I believe. Yeah, I had to fetch he says that even after you give him an ember, but Anyways, if you get an ember and you give it to him, he will... This is the guy that infuses weapons. So, more large titanite shards. You get a lot of resources from this guy. And he's actually sitting on a chest that you can get to, and I'll show you how once I finish looting this shit. Uh, iron arrow is not really... Not kind of useful, I guess. And... Heavy bolt. So, to get to this chest that he's sitting on... What you need to do is go to this bonfire, press Y, light a torch, and then light this thing. And then, as you can see, it's nice and bright over here, nice and friendly, like someone would come over there and sit down for a while. So if you rest out a bonfire, voila, he comes over here and starts smacking a piece of metal. And then you can get to this chest, and you get Craftsman's Hammer and Twinkly Titanite. Twinkly Titanite is important for special weapons. They can get some Black Knight shit and like pretty much any special weapon. You have to use Twinkly Titanite. So, should the Craftsman's Hammer? Well, scale's okay with strengths. It requires a lot of strengths to use in some decks. I don't know. It's not really that good. See what it looks like. I've never actually put it on. Uh, yeah, it's basically just, you know, what he's using. Well, a little different, but, you know. You know. But we're not going to use it because it sucks. Uh, so that's that guy. I can't actually use him as boxman now because we don't have the ember. You get it in a later area. Not really later. You could go to it anytime you want, really. Well, after Hibs Tower. Uh, so we're going to go back to Majula, because we have all of these souls, and we've got a very large amount of large titanite shards in this place, which is basically why I came here. So we're going to up upgrade our mace. Maybe, I think we'll have enough for twice. Yeah, we definitely will, because we got three in that chest, I think. I think we did. Yeah, yeah, we totally did. So we're going to upgrade our mace twice. Should be possible. Then we'll level up a few times. Uh, not by. Reinforce. Mace? So, plus five. No, we actually don't have enough. Well. That's annoying. Uh, we could use Twinkling Titanite to upgrade our shield. Increases the stability a little. Not really that useful right now. We'll save it just in case there's something else we want to upgrade with Twinkling Titanite. And what we're gonna do is first priority for our levels is strength. 16. That's all we need. Rest put, so we get 22, so we'll put 18. Insurance. Oops. That seems like a good spread. 
Yeah, we'll go with that. Here we go. So there's the levels, and so what did we do this episode, really? We beat the last giant. We beat the Dragon Rider in Abe's Tower. We failed on the Ornstein fight, and fucked our chances at beating the game with zero deaths. Uh, we failed getting to No Man's Wharf by dying again, but we still got there. We killed the Pursuer, got some upgrading materials, and yeah. So, I'd say this, we did some stuff. That was pretty good. So I'm going to end it here, because my, my timer says 48 minutes, and I started it a little late, so we're probably more like 50-something. So that's pretty long. But yeah, we're going to rest of the bonfire to um, initiate logging out sequence and yeah so if you liked it then you should like it if you want to you can subscribe if you want to see more or you could just not subscribe and just keep going to my channel every day to see more that's kind of a dick move though and yeah blah 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 YouTube 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 and comment about stuff that I could do in the future. Anyways, bye bye.